Death is a topic that many prefer to avoid, but it is an inevitable reality that we will all face at some point. The crucial question is, how do we face that last minute of life? Is it possible to prepare for this final moment? Or do we simply arrive at it unprepared? In some cases, death occurs suddenly, leaving us no time to prepare. Dear listener, today in this Bible study, we will explore a fundamental topic. What exactly happens one minute before we die? Let's unravel the biblical teachings about death, the final process, and how our relationship with God can influence that decisive moment. Before we continue, we would like to express our gratitude to all who follow this ministry. If you are not yet part of our community, we invite you to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell. This way, you will be the first to know every time we publish a new video. Let's get started. On a quiet autumn afternoon, two people were about to face the last minute of their lives, each from a very different perspective. John was a man of deep faith. Throughout his life, he had found comfort and purpose in his relationship with God. Over the years, he had faced many difficulties, but he always found peace in the biblical promises. As the illness progressed and his time approached, John maintained a calm attitude. In his final hour, surrounded by his family and friends, John sat in his room, a comforting calm filling the air. As his loved ones said their goodbyes, John was certain that his life was about to transform into something glorious. With a peace that transcended circumstances, he trusted in the promises of eternal life. His last breath was calm, full of hope, and on his face one could see the immense joy of meeting his Creator. Sophia, on the other hand, lived a life focused on the pursuit of success and temporary pleasures, without much interest in the spiritual. When the illness suddenly struck her, she had no time to prepare for the end. In her final moments, she found herself in a hospital, alone and scared. As pain took over her body and darkness began to envelop her, Sophia felt a deep sense of uncertainty and despair. She looked around, searching for answers she couldn't find. With no faith in an afterlife, she faced her final minute with palpable anguish. On her deathbed, Sophia experienced a mixture of fear and confusion. The absence of any clear hope for the afterlife made her final moment filled with anxiety and hopelessness. As the end approached, the feeling of entering the unknown without spiritual preparation intensified his anguish. Lack of faith and uncertainty of the final destination made the last minute a time of great suffering and desolation. The story of John and Sophia illustrates two different paths at the end of life. John, with his faith in God, found peace and hope in his final moments while Sophia, without a belief in eternal life, faced the end with fear and despair. The difference in their experiences underscores the importance of having a strong faith and relationship with God to face the end with peace. Dear listener, what decision will you make today to ensure that your last minute is filled with peace and hope? Now, death, from a biblical perspective, is a universal phenomenon that marks the end of life and is generally greatly regretted. Both plants and animals experience death, but the first humans, Adam and Eve, were created with a unique ability that distinguished them from other creatures, the option to choose between immortality and death, depending on their obedience to God. When Adam and Eve disobeyed by eating the forbidden fruit, they not only faced death, but this human experience turned out to be different from death in the animal kingdom. Although Adam died, he did not cease to exist completely. His death involved a separation on three levels, physical, moral, and spiritual. This same nature of death was transmitted to all his descendants and to all humanity. Human death does not simply mean ceasing to exist. It is based on a fundamental separation. Physical death is the separation of the body from the soul. Spiritual death is the separation of the human being from his Creator. Although Adam did not die immediately after disobeying, he lived for 930 years, and his death represented the loss of immortality. From that point on, he began to age, and death became inevitable. 
If Adam had not disobeyed, he would have remained immortal both physically and spiritually. Now, although we understand that death is an inevitable reality, many people are not prepared to face this moment. It is important to remember that death does not only affect the elderly or the sick. In fact, no one is exempt from it. From the moment we were conceived in the womb, death has been present, stalking both you and me. Imagine, dear listener, that you are on the threshold of your final days. At that crucial moment, various thoughts and reflections may invade your mind. You may begin to intensely evaluate your life, evaluating your interpersonal relationships and questioning the importance of having had a relationship with God. The awareness of facing the unknown, coupled with uncertainty about your faith and eternal destiny, can create deep unease. Fear of what comes after death can take hold, especially if you feel like you have no clear certainty about your final destination. While many contemporary philosophies and schools of thought argue against the existence of life after death, it is important to note that none of these theories offer concrete evidence to refute the possibility of eternal life. These positions are often based on philosophical assumptions or interpretations that lack a solid empirical basis. In contrast, there is a historical and religious figure who claims to have returned from the dead, Jesus of Nazareth. According to biblical accounts, Jesus not only died and was resurrected, but also provided teachings and evidence about the existence of an afterlife. His resurrection is presented as proof that eternal life is a reality and that there are two eternal destinies, one of eternal communion with God and one of separation from His presence. Jesus' teaching, therefore, offers a unique perspective on the afterlife, providing a basis for hope and certainty amid the uncertainty that accompanies the end of life. Its message not only addresses life after death, but also offers guidance on how to prepare for that final destination, providing assurance and direction on a topic that might otherwise seem bewildering and frightening. Now the question at hand is, what happens one minute before we die? For many, this is a question fraught with fear, mystery, and uncertainty. However, the Bible offers us a different view, one that is full of hope and promise. From Genesis to Revelation, we see that death is described as the moment when the Spirit returns to God who gave it. In the New Testament, Jesus speaks of death not as an end, but as a step toward eternal life. Let us read the Gospel of John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? For the person who believes in Jesus Christ, physical death does not represent a tragic end, but rather a transition to a full eternal life in the presence of God. This new existence not only promises continuity, but also a transformation. The believer will receive a new, immortal, and incorruptible body, ensuring that he will never again experience death. This crucial minute before death, according to Scripture, is a time when the soul prepares to meet its Creator. Jesus asks his interlocutor, Do you believe in this? And today, he asks each of us the same question. Dear listeners, do you believe in this? Personally, I have decided to believe. Some might consider this faith ridiculous, and that is their choice. But sooner or later, we will all face this reality. Perhaps in that last minute of life, some will realize that they are not certain about their destiny, and by then, it will be too late. Many have shared near-death experiences in which they describe visions of light and peace. It is documented by doctors that believers approaching death often glimpse a divine face and feel profound joy. On the contrary, those who do not believe often experience terror and anguish when faced with death, full of fear and terror. This moment is crucial in determining your eternal destiny, since whoever you have served in this life will be the one who welcomes you and leads you to your final resting place. Therefore, believers experience joy because they can feel the presence of God's angels at that last moment. Let us read the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verse 22. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried.
In this text, we find a crucial scene that describes what happens after death. When Lazarus died, the Bible mentions that he was escorted by angels who took his soul to its eternal destiny. Although it is not specified that the angels took the rich man to hell, we can assume that he was led there by entities of darkness, since he became their property. This narrative leads us to reflect on what happens in the spiritual world when a person is on the brink of death. There is an expectation in that area to take over the soul, with opposing forces fighting for the eternal destiny of each individual. A brother who was a deacon in the congregation I pastored shared with me a shocking experience he had. He was hospitalized for almost a year due to medical negligence and terminal cancer. He confessed to me that during that time, he was not in communion with the Lord. At a critical moment in the hospital, he felt a pang in his heart and described how something was falling out of his body. He was looking at his own body from outside and, filled with fear, he began to cry. Suddenly, three huge angels dressed in black appeared, took him by the hand and led him through a tunnel. Desperate, he began to scream and ask God to help him. At that moment, a light appeared, and those dark beings released him. Immediately, he felt himself returning to his body and heard the doctor saying that he had died, even notifying his family. He doesn't know how much time passed, but then he opened his eyes, surprising the doctors who had declared him dead. With tears in her eyes, she told me how death seemed to her like a simple pang in the heart, followed by a sigh and the feeling that life ends in an instant. This experience led him to reaffirm his life in the Lord, understanding the importance of being at peace with God. Dear listeners, whether this is true or not is up to you. However, there is one undeniable fact. A minute before death and what happens after it are crucial moments that can determine our eternal destiny. Now, the Bible does not rule out these experiences. In fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 2-4, through 4, the Apostle Paul says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows, was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I do not know, God knows, who was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible things, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. The man Paul is actually talking about is himself, although he refers to himself in the third person. In his account, he describes how he was taken to the third heaven, a place of ineffable beauty and holiness, where he heard things that could not be expressed in human words. This encounter was so extraordinary that it is easy to imagine that Paul did not want to return to this world. This testimony gives us great comfort and hope, reminding us that God's paradise is real and is prepared for God's children. This story not only encourages us to maintain our faith, but also offers us a glimpse of the glorious destiny that awaits us in eternity. Now, according to the Bible, after death comes judgment. Let's read Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And just as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this comes judgment. It is a general rule that all human beings must face death. However, there have been rare exceptions to this rule. For example, people like Lazarus, who were resurrected through a miracle, did not receive a glorified body or eternal life at that time. They simply returned to their earthly life. This type of resurrection did not grant them immortality, but only a temporary extension of their life. Another exception concerns those who will not experience death at all, as they will be taken directly to heaven without going through physical death, i.e. in the rapture. These exceptions highlight that, although death is an unavoidable reality for most, in certain specific cases, the fate of some has been different. After death comes judgment. This is a universal principle that affects all people. No one is exempt from their sins if they have not been forgiven and cleansed. The actions and decisions of each individual are recorded and will be evaluated in that trial. All of us, regardless of our beliefs, will face an evaluation based on our actions during our lifetime, and those who have not received forgiveness will face eternal damnation. Now, Dear listeners, imagine for a moment that you are in the last minutes of your life, 
what would you do? Although thank God we are not in that situation, thinking about it leads us to reflect deeply on our eternal destiny. Someone once said that there are three crucial decisions we must make in life. The first is what we will dedicate our lives to, being a lawyer, a farmer, an engineer, among other options. This decision determines where we invest our time and effort. The second is who we will marry or whether we decide to remain single. The choice of our partner significantly influences the course of our lives. But the third and most important decision is where we will spend eternity. This is where many people do not meditate or become aware, and most are not prepared to face death and, of course, their eternal destiny. This reflection invites us to seriously consider our decisions and their impact, not only in this life, but in life beyond death. Many people have told me that they plan to repent at the last minute of their life. However, dear listener, we must remember that that last minute may never come. We do not know when our last breath will be, but what we can do is ensure our salvation in Christ Jesus today. Let us not put off until tomorrow what is essential for our eternity. Today is the time to make that crucial decision and secure our eternal destiny. The Bible teaches us to live each day as if it were our last, not with fear, but with constant hope and preparation. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 44, Jesus warns us, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Spiritual preparation does not consist solely of avoiding sin, but of developing an intimate relationship with God. This relationship gives us the certainty that we are ready to meet Him at any time and gives us the peace of mind of knowing that if death surprises us, we will be in the presence of the Lord. It is this deep connection with God that assures us an eternal destiny full of peace and hope. For the believer, death is not the end, but the beginning of eternal life. Jesus promises that he has gone to prepare a place for us, an eternal home where there will be no more pain or tears. This is the consolation that Christians have when facing death, the certainty that something infinitely better than this earthly life awaits us. This is a promise that fills us with hope and gives us strength to live with purpose. In Psalm 116, verse 15, we read, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. This verse reminds us that the death of a believer is valuable and precious in the eyes of God. It is not a tragic event, but a moment of triumph, of returning home. Those who die in Christ do so with the peace of knowing that they are entering into the presence of their Savior. This peace is a gift from God, given to those who trust in Him. One minute before death. For many, it is a moment of terror, but for those who trust in God, it is a moment of peace and hope. The Bible guides us and offers us answers to this mystery that we will all face. Dear listener, today is the day to reflect on our lives, to seek God, and prepare ourselves for that final moment. The Bible tells us about a foolish man and describes a course of action full of foolishness. Unfortunately, this path of foolishness is not exclusive to one person, but many seem to follow this broad and easy path. It is a reminder of how, throughout history, reckless decisions devoid of divine wisdom have led many to ruin. The lesson is clear. We must not let ourselves be led down the easiest or most popular path, but rather seek God's wisdom and guidance to avoid falling into the same foolishness. Let's read in the Gospel of Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. He also told them a parable, saying, The ground of a certain rich man produced abundantly, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to myself, Soul, you have many good things laid up for many years. Take your rest, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life will be required of you and whose will the things you have provided become. So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God.
You may be successful in business, your studies, or your personal achievements, and have many plans for the future. However, God warns that at any moment, the night may come when your soul will be demanded of you. This reminds us of the fragility of life and the importance of not losing sight of what is truly essential, our relationship with God and our eternal destiny. Everything we accumulate in this world is temporary, but what we do for our spirit has eternal repercussions. Dear listener, are we ready to meet our Lord Jesus Christ? The decision is in our hands. May this video inspire you to live with eternity in mind and with the certainty that in Christ, death is not the end, but the beginning of an eternal life with God. And so we come to the end of this video. Thank you for being part of our channel. God bless you abundantly. Until the next video.